Now, what we're going to look at tonight is step three, which is the ER diagram. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put things into perspective. I don't know if you remember one of the very first lectures that we did. I talked about what is called the framework. And in that, we talked about the SDLC, my very simplified version, which looked like this. Analysis, design, implementation, and maintenance. And I said that as a product of each of these we have here, ER diagram. Over here we have the RM diagram. And down here we have a relational database. So we have this coming down there, that for that, that for that, and we have them being linked together. So we are almost at step, we are at step three here. So we're almost for this here. Now we're not just producing the simplified diagram tonight. We're going to produce what we call the simplified version of the ER diagram. And that is the first part of the analysis phase. Uh, this here, the relational model diagram, comes all the way down in step six. But this here is one of the most important things that we, we have to do, which is to create an ER diagram, okay? And that is what we are going to look at tonight. The first step in creating the ER diagram, the simplified ER diagram. Now, before we do this, let's have a look at the first two steps. Uh, step one. Was what? These entities. Entities and attributes. And step two. You just completed that. Relationship. Relationships. Yeah. And now, step three is simplify the ER diagram. Now, the reason this is called simplified, the reason it's called a simplified ER diagram is because it doesn't contain any details. It is extremely simple. All you really do in step three is take the information from step one and step two and put it in the form of a diagram. That's all you do. That's why it's called simplified. Very, very simple. So you have a visual representation of what you did in step one and step two. Right, so let's have a look at how we take the information from step one and step two and create a simplified diagram. Now, I just need you to put that in the context of all of this here. Because remember, at the end of the day, this is what we're looking to do. And this here, the ER diagram, is what we're going to do tonight. All we're doing really is taking the information from one and two and putting them together. And what we're doing is that we're creating it in a visual manner. There are two symbols you need to know. Uh, for the ER diagram. ER is short for entity relationship. So the two things you need to know are entities and relationship. Entities are rectangles and relationships are diamonds. And the entities, of course, will contain all of the attributes, and the diamond will just contain the name of the relationship. So at the end of the day, we have entities look like this, 
and relationships look like that. However, you will have the, the name at the top there, and then you will have your primary key, uh, and these are the things. That's basically how it will look. Something like that. It's on page 42. Okay, so you start Microsoft Visio. And when you start Microsoft Visio, you can use the database model diagram. That is usually found in software and database. And there it is, database model diagram. You must make sure that you select that template. Click on it. You can select either US or metric units, depending on what you want to do. And you click on Create. Now, uh, for those of you who've used Visio before, you have different stencils. Now, when you select the database model diagram template, you get certain built-in stencils. And you have stencils in here for the entity, the relationship, and, the, and these kinds of things. However, what you do not have is a diamond. So, for the entity, I will just select it and I will drag it out. Now, if I actually zoom in, you notice it has a name that is already given to it, which is the table name. By double clicking on it, I can set the properties of it. Now I'm going to use a case study one. So we have lecturers, students, log entries, courses, and users. Now what you need to understand also is that if you have relationships uh, with tables that have relationships with themselves, self-referencing tables, you have to put that down twice. You have to document that twice. Okay? So. Physical name in this case, let's say lecturers. Notice the name at the top changes also as I type it in. I click on the left here, I click columns, and I can begin to put in the columns. Now, since this is a simplified diagram, you do not have to put in all of the attributes. You just have to put in the most important attribute. Those attributes that are the primary key, the key, and the essential uh, attributes for the entity. Those are the only ones that you really need to put in at this stage, enough to capture it. The reason is that your diagram can become very cluttered, and you do not want your diagram cluttered. So, PK, I just select PK, and it automatically selects that as the primary key. For those that we want as keys, we can select as required. For example, last name and gender. And you notice those are bold. Very, very, very simple. So we can go ahead now, and I will create one other as uh, an example, which is the students. The entity on the left, I take it, I drag it out. And because I already have the pin up at the bottom here, I click on definition, double click, change the name. And this one is students. Next one, columns. And that has a student ID. two entities, I select the primary key which is student ID, make the last name and gender required, and maybe also the degree program, the degree program on there. Yeah. 
So we have our two entities. Now to get rid of the little window, the pane at the bottom, I click the little X at the okay. bottom left of that. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. You need a photographic memory. <laughs> okay. Okay, I can see about that. So we have our two entities. Next, we need the diamond for the relationship. In order to get the diamond, I get it from more shapes, visual extras, sorry, more shapes, flowchart, basic flowchart shapes. US or metric, it doesn't matter. And I get another template, and I normally use the diamond, which in the flowchart symbol represents a decision. But in this case, I use it to represent a relationship. So I just take that, I drag that out. That's my relationship. I double click on it, and the relationship here is advice. If I want to, I can change the font size so that it appears larger. The pairs between the two. Next, what I have to do is connect them to each other. Go back into entity relationship, and for this, I use the dynamic connector. At this stage, this is the connection that we're using. When we go on to the final stage, we're going to actually use this connector, which is the relationship. For now, we use the dynamic connector. I drag the connector out. And then I take the end of the connector, drag it over the middle of the shape, and you notice the shape is highlighted red. Then I release it, I take the other end, hold it over the middle of the diamond, it's highlighted red, and I release it. I do the same thing to the next side, and there we go. This means that if I move one of these, the connector moves accordingly. Okay? That's the reason for gluing the connector to the center rather than at the end. And you use this now to build up your entire diagram. The relationships, remember, come from the EE matrix. So for every relationship that you have in your matrix, you need to create a diamond. And every entity that you have on the matrix, you need to create a rectangle. And then you use the matrix to determine what entities are connected to what relationships and how they're connected. You might find that you, you may have to reshuffle your diagram after you are finished. Questions? Seems pretty straightforward. Pretty much. Okay then.